their capital uh, time. So that's a deep problem, um, and it's cheap. Coal's cheap. And we have existing preconceptions, preconceptions about what clean energy is capable of, which my book is meant to address, and existing preconceptions about the urgency of the problem, uh, which a lot of people are trying to address, but it's pretty hard to yell against the, the noise of Fox News, who actually think it's not real. So uh, that's, that's democracy, but that's messy. Um, and there's the deployment of capital. Capital is very slow and risk averse and it doesn't move quickly. And that's uh, the one I'd like to talk about is how we solve that last hurdle. We have lots of, uh, uh, so the one, the, the one emphasis I didn't make is this though too. Clean tech is different from other kinds of technology, right? Whether it's an iPod or a new method of farming or the car or the steam engine, typically we invent something that allows us to have a better life by controlling the environment and because people want it, because it controls the environment in a way that they like, it, it creates its own market, right? The iPod creates its own market. You invent something, you put it in the market, you create a demand. That's how the markets work. That's how technology is brought into the, to the marketplace. Clean tech is not like that. If we didn't have a carbon problem, if all we had was a peak oil problem, we'd have a, we'd have a few points of pain, but this, would roughly model, this model would roughly work. The problem is that we have a need to control our environment today for costs that are going to be incurred 30 or 40 years from now. And we've got, and we know this because of the science, and we've invented what we need. Enhanced geothermal, solar thermal, uh, PV, biomass production. We've already got it. The problem is we don't want it. Uh, not at scale, because coal is still cheap. So the challenge we have is to create the market, right? And this is what I think good policy needs to do. It needs to send signals into the marketplace to create demand for, this, for these products. Once they begin to be developed at scale, I've got arguments in my book that, one, that solar thermal, for example, once you reach a certain scale, produces energy at a lower cost than the oil sands. Right? So this, this should be on the radar of people with investments in the oil sands. They will eventually become uncompetitive. But, if, but we, we're, until we get to that scale, we're not competitive. We're not cheaper than coal. So we have a chicken and an egg problem. We need to get to scale before we can bring the cost down, but there's no reason to deploy it at scale because I turn the light on and it works. There's no demand for this stuff. And that's why we need to create a marketplace. Now the rest of the world is doing this, right? Europe is doing this, China is doing this, the States is beginning to do this, in Canada we're not. So we're gonna miss the opportunity to create the conditions in which our clean tech companies like yourselves can sell their, their markets into the global marketplace. So we need to intelligently and creatively figure out ways to create markets and shape the market, right? The market isn't a natural thing like a tree that operates under its own rules. The market is an invention. It's like an iPod, right? We invented credit, we invented money, we invented contract law. You know, we invented the market and we can shape it. And that's exactly what we need to do to bring clean tech into the marketplace to allow us to be competitive in what is going to be the single largest infrastructure play in human history which I said it a few times, but I'm going to emphasize it again. This is a massive market opportunity. Uh, and and we're, we're, we're very silly not to see that and not to be proactive about, about creating it. So that's what policy is for. Policy options, um, we can put a price on carbon. That's price stable, but there's no target. So it's not very effective when it comes to uh, reaching your, target em your, your emissions targets as a country. Cap and trade or cap and dividend, there's, there's a, an important distinction between the two, which I won't get into now. That's very target specific, so that's a policy that allows you to meet your emissions targets, but it's price uncertain because the market will determine the price. Um, we have a feed-in tariff, which we have in, in Ontario. Uh, it's okay. It's technology specific. I think what will be very useful is a technology neutral feed-in tariff. Even better, a, te a, te a, a technology neutral tariff that is designed to allow commercial scale prototypes of new technology to get built. So if Alberta said to the world, I'll pay you 50 cents a kilowatt hour, up to some cap, obviously, it's not an open-ended thing, to bring new technologies here and show that they work, or large scale storage, I'll pay you to arbitrage power from you know, middle of the night to middle of the day, I'll pay you 50 cents a kilowatt hour, you would see the world beat a path to your door to build those technologies here, just like California is trying to do that with storage. And what you'll do then, of course, is build up a massive knowledge base and a bunch of companies here that are capable of selling this stuff to the world. So I think the feed-in tariff can be tweaked to be much more market friendly. We have straight up regulation. Uh, I don't see why geothermal heating and cooling doesn't become part of the building code, to be perfectly honest. And then we have green bonds, um, which I think is a very effective way of bringing technology into the marketplace. The idea is that there is an enormous amount of, of monetary assets out there that are, that are risk averse. 
Banks are allergic to technology risk, and it takes a long time before a bank is willing to fund a project at the scale that we need to build these things out and prove them, right? So if we left it to the marketplace, it would be 10, 15 years before, you know, large-scale solar thermal or enhanced geothermal or any of those kinds of technologies really get deployed, and we haven't got that much time. So the idea behind the green bond is very simple. Uh, pension funds in particular in the developed world are sitting on $140 trillion. So we've got the capital. We just need to redirect it. And right now, all that money sits in government bonds, long-term investments, money markets. We would like to put it into long-term clean tech infrastructure, but it won't go there because there is a perceived risk. And so they will lend it, but they will lend it at very high rates, which does not make clean energy any more competitive against coal, right? If you build a coal plant, you can borrow money pretty cheap. Uh, but you can't do that for a solar project, and you can't do that for a lot of other clean energies. And so there's a high risk associated with this clean long-term infrastructure. So how do we solve that problem? Well, the idea is that the green bond sits with government backing as a way to redirect those funds into, law, into, into infrastructure. Now, the devil's in the details. I mean, the idea behind this is not that the government raises money and spends it. The government simply raises money using its risk rate, lets the private sector manage that money, and lets the private sector figure out where to lend that money for project finance, given a kind of a success metric, like reduce carbon dollars per ton. Uh, that's your metric, how, how much it costs me, the government, to have carbon reduced. And if, of course, there's no loan defaults, there's no cost to the government, so you've mandated this, this private sector uh, company who'd bid on it to mitigate risk on project finance with a mandate to lend it out at, you know, what the government borrowed it plus a percent to cover some costs. So you're essentially saying, I'm going to shorten the time that it takes for uh, low-cost debt to hit the marketplace for project finance. I'm going to use all the resources of the private sector to do that, all the due diligence and the management team and the technology, technology neutral, so, you know, private sector can pick what technology they want. All you got to do is reduce carbon. You may give that as the metric. They, and they can put liens on power purchase agreements. They can put liens on equipment. So it's not venture money, it's project money. And the idea being, if you can mitigate those loan defaults, there is no cost to government. And because they're, project, uh, they're projects as opposed to you know, pushing technology and developing technology, they create revenue. And if you put up a wind farm, you have a power purchase agreement, you know exactly how the loan's going to get repaid, right? Out of the power purchase agreement. And if they default on the loan, you take over the windmills, you take over the power purchase agreement. So it's not general revenues that I'm talking about. I'm talking about a firewalled fund managed by the private sector. The only reason the government is there to back it is to ensure that the rate at which they're capable of lending money is low, because they can borrow it at very low rates. So there's details, obviously. <laughs> I've tried to sort of cover it. Uh, but if you go to greenbonds.ca, there's a lot of details there. But I think that's a policy that, that solves a lot of the problems we have in ushering these technologies into the marketplace and creates a domestic market for clean tech companies to prove their stuff before they go out and sell it into the single largest global market the world has ever seen. I don't know if I mentioned that before. but <laughs> So that's really it. Uh, what I'm saying is it's possible to kick the habit. It's important that we kick the habit. And in doing it, there is a strong economic argument for growth buried in there, right? It's not just an environmental or moral imperative, which I think it is. It is in our best economic interests to, to develop some smart policy to get on with kicking the habit. And that's my story. Thank you very much.